My name is Matt, welcome back to the Xenomorph Universe, and we're looking at the dropship. So this was one of my favourite uh, aspects. Um, as a young lad and stuff, aviation was, uh, like a lot of you know young guys, you either get into rockets or aviation or something like that, and I absolutely loved uh, just the look, aesthetically, just looking at this thing. I love the whole idea of VTOL, you know, I used to go to air shows and stuff as a young lad, and see the Harrier, and just think, wow, this thing's just bloody amazing. It's a troop carrier. Oh, this thing's just fantastic. It was like Thunderbirds and just Vietnam films and everything just all rolled into one. It was just, oh, and the pods open up and all these missiles and rockets come out, and it's green, and, you know, I was more in favour of the Army than anything else, but the Air Force, it was all just, you know, a mishmash when you're that age of anything military just looks cool and awesome and the sounds and the camera angles and everything else it just looked amazing however there are some problems um in the film um and what i want to talk about is yes i loved it and yes it was great and i ran out and bought a model uh, one of the Airfix models, um, one of these kits, and uh, put it together really badly, paid £20 for it, and nowadays you'll be lucky if you can get one for £100. And, uh, yeah, oh well. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's been and gone and done, and I am guilty of probably ruining one of them and playing with it to death and then just breaking it eventually over time and snapping bits off it. Any road. What I want to go through today is um, I then later on in life joined the uh, REMI in the British Army and went to and was assigned to the Army Air Corps and basically became an aircraft engineer and did a lot of engineering about you know well aircraft and their engines basically the power plants and being a lot older now looking back at this design from a practical point of view. Um, there are some things that uh, stand out, some things that are wrong, some things that are nice, and so on and so on and so on. So I just want to look at this from a, a practical engineering point of view because I already know how cool it is when I, you know, that's that still is with me now. But regardless, so the whole VTOL thing with the nozzles, the rotating nozzles that have been, you know, pinched, the idea has been pinched from the Harrier. Um, they won't work simply because the nozzles are in the wrong place. They need to be either side of the centre of mass, and they definitely aren't, unless the tailplane section of this thing weighs about 50 metric tons. Um, so that you know, there's stuff like that. The other thing was is I remember watching the special edition when Ron Cobb. Um, was talking about the design. Because um, this design, this dropship that was in the film, is it the UD something, it's the Cheyenne. Um, he was talking about how it looked really spindly with the arms and stuff. Back when I was a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. And I actually agree with him these days. You know, you look at them, the actual outer arms, the rear arms with all the rockets in the CRV-7s, that's what they look like. Uh, yes, they are spindly. You should have had just the front ones. Uh, the front opening bay ones and forget the back ones completely. If you don't know they're there, then you're not going to miss them. But um, apart from things like that being spindly and the VTOL not working properly, um, the, the lifting body, mm, I, I really doubt it. The, the tail plane are basically wings, but the front of the aircraft doesn't look like... I don't know. I, I can't say if it could be a a lifting body to lift those that mass and stuff like that but there's other problems as well so it if it just let's just imagine it is airworthy right let's just imagine the thing does fly because of some magic um you know the idea is brilliant it's a very compact aircraft that you can drop from orbit um to any location around you know any orbiting body that you you, you know you're in orbit around you can basically get to any uh, location based on your orbital velocity, your altitude above the surface, 
So let's just say you're on Earth or something. You know, you can get anywhere pretty much within under an hour. Um, what is strange in the film is that he's, it, Bishop remarks saying, there's the drop, there's loading up the ship, then there's the drop, and then there's half an hour flight time, which that doesn't make any sense. Because let's just say, you know, LV-426, it's a small moon. You know, what's your orbital time on that? I don't know what the orbital time is on the moon. It just say, I don't know, 200 kilometer orbit altitude. But let's just say it's something like half an hour. You know, you wait half an hour and you can be anywhere, above anywhere. And then your drop time is minutes. You know what I mean? It's literally minutes, especially if you've got an engine, you can have powered flight. Depending what your orbital velocity is, we're talking minutes. You know what I mean? Nothing. And that, surely that was the whole point, is that you could drop these marines to any location within minutes. You know what I mean? You'd literally drop them onto that location and then they can deploy not taking half an hour. Now, I know it required it. Well, it didn't require it for the script. You know, you didn't have to require something like that. You could say it was the other side of the moon, but like I say, an entire orbit is probably half an hour. But regardless, it just seems to take away the urgency uh, of this thing. You know, oh, we'll call it down when we're near the landing bay or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But I'm just saying that in reality, um, a dropship um, system like this could be deployed anywhere in a matter of minutes it would not take absolutely for like you know an hour or two loading up yep you know whatever it's got to load up fuel or whatever you know fair enough but anything else the actual dropping section of the ship would take no time at all and the actual drop sequence in the film i'm not actually sure how long that takes because you know hicks falls asleep stuff like that it could be a drawn out process that's brilliantly edited because it really was it did give you that sense of it didn't take that long whatsoever but um you know it's a beautiful looking craft you know it did look like nothing else we'd seen before in cinema stuff like that it did look like a real world uh design and you know there's a lot of uh, sci-fi aircraft that have been that have followed that design you know in halo in well bloody everything really in Dropships have been used in absolutely anything. You go on to like Google and type in dropship now, and it's bloody absolutely everywhere. This is probably actually one of the the least ones that are pictured. You know, it's everything else. It's Killzone, Halo, you name it. There's a dropship, even in Star Wars stuff like that. But uh, as a kid, I was absolutely blown away by this thing, and especially the scenes where the it's side on, and you can hear the engines straining you know that really high rpm whine as the engines buffeting through the atmosphere do love that bit and i do love when it's loading just before the drop and you can see all the dust and crap on it it's just a very nice touch that made the thing feel very believable and one little tiny criticism from the production of this whole thing is as it flies around there's one or two janky jerky motions that don't look too good and when it explodes, you can see that it's just a shell. And I was really disappointed with that. Even watching it as a young lad, I could tell it's just an empty shell of nothing. You know what I mean? Fill it with something. You know, nuts, bolts, bits of bric-a-brac. So when you do blow it up and crash it into something, all this crap falls out. Not just have this empty Easter egg shell. You know what I mean? It was just it was quite obvious what it was, which was a bit of a shame. But apart from that, you know, uh, beautifully executed most of the time and uh, did spark the imagination of me when I was a kid. And I remember playing with the kids in the street and we're all pretending we're in a dropship being dropped down to some horrible planet surface. <laughs> the stuff you remember. Any road, that's enough about the dropship in reality. Um, watch the other videos, tell them what you think, stuff like that. And I'll see you next time.